What's going on everyone? I'm Jaren and I know I've been slacking. I know the last week of October was pretty rough for me. I got sick right just before Halloween and I had a lot of plans and a, a lot of things going on, especially with catching up with friends, catching up with family, just so many things going on and especially with work, I've just been overly tired, especially being heavily medicated, which is crazy, but here we are. I got so much reviews to talk to you guys about, but first we're gonna kick things off with Caddo Lake. When an eight-year-old girl disappears on Caddo Lake, a series of past deaths and disappearances begin to link together, altering a broken family's history. Now, I went into this movie expecting one thing, then I came out the other end with a whole different kind of experience. And they were dumping this on Mac, so it had very minimal marketing. All I got from the first initial teaser was that it was going to be a mystery thriller produced by M. Night Shyamalan, and it was going to be starring Dylan O'Brien. Now, I wasn't sure if it was for the best. Maybe it was by design that going in blind was going to be the best experience possible to watch this movie, and it was. This film is written and directed by Logan George and Celine Held, who have worked on Apple TV's The Servant, and you can tell that they're very passionate about this project. Working with M. Night, I'm pretty sure that they were able to pull some strings with New Line and get their script into the right hands and under the right eyes. With having the setup of an eight-year-old girl going missing and exhuming a lot of family secrets, you can tell that we were heading into dark places. And that's when I really honed in my attention because a lot of the details began to come together like a vital puzzle piece to a much bigger picture. Now, I'm not gonna lie, I know that a lot of the things that I do recommend, especially when it comes on streaming, a lot of people tend to think that it's slow, and the first 40 minutes are in fact very slow. Uh, it takes a while to get going, you are establishing a lot of characters and a lot of the predicament at hand, but having said that, just like Strange Darling, this is really difficult to talk about without giving so much away in detail. Uh, I was very unclear, very unassure about where the story was going to take me, and it was really nice kind of going in blind. I just wanted the story uh, to flow and to unfold before me very naturally, just to feel a lot of the nuances just brush past me without me having somewhat of an expectation, and that was, that was really refreshing. The performances all around were just excellent, including Dylan O'Brien, who is nothing short of tremendous. There is a piece of his past that he hasn't fully healed from and refuses to move on without so much of a clear conscience. Once he stumbles upon that one section of the lake, he is just determined to unveil the ties that might hold the answers to what he's been searching for. Now, I know a lot of his characterization might feel at arm's length, but once you see that his end goal is fully realized, you are just rooting for him to make it through his journey. We also got Eliza Scanlon here, who is just as equally sensational. She does come from a broken family, and there's a lot of push and pull when it comes to being the role model or the unfavored child. Now, when she does come across her one section of the lake, it did keep me at the edge of my seat, and also a lot of her journey and the revelations that fall before her are emotionally devastating and life-affirming, making her the heart of the film. The landscape setting on this small southern town and the lake felt very grungy and atmospheric, especially with sections of the lake that you would see a lot of trees grow from the bottom of the lake that was very abundant in some sort of ways, as well as the wildlife, the lower water levels that was just covered in litter that gave off a much more swampish look. And it was kind of interesting to see that we were following some residents who would commute in and out of these thick channels on the daily, which is just something that I'm not very much used to. And then also just the way that we see a lot of these landmarks, uh, like the old oil pump, as well as like the broken down bridge. I mean, I swear that's gotta have more significance than what we're shown and given here. There is, in fact, some very strange things happening on Caddo Lake that is much more mysterious than the disappearance of an eight-year-old girl. But I'm going to be honest, this is not one of those movies where they hold your hand for exposition and hand over the reveals the way that you were expecting. You are fields behind on what's really going on, and you know just as much as the characters do. And I think it was a bold choice for them to just let the mystery just flourish at the pace that it does while leaving the viewers in the cold. You know, the one perk about this being a streaming movie was that when the reveals got a little heavy, 
I just had to go back and rewind it. I had to go back several scenes and just make sure that I was just staying on track. I mean, I merely pulled out a pen, paper, and probably a calculator just to take notes. <laughs> and um, you know what? Just having to stop and think if this was a little bit far-fetched, the way that M. Night Shyamalan would do his plot twists, or was this grounded enough just for me to enjoy it, for it to work? And I gotta say that it was it was really rewarding. I mean, I, I really went on for the ride, especially once you get a sense of the subject matter that they're trying to tackle, your brain just immediately starts to make all of its assumptions, make all of its predictions of how this is going to result. I also can't stop thinking about the various directions and possible angles that they could tackle this if they were to conceive a sequel. Some people could argue that it would work better as a television series. I mean, it actually does feel like a 100-minute episode of The Twilight Zone, but I don't think it would have the same effect as it would as a movie. But I think that the history is rich, and there is probably a lot more to say about, you know, the characters maybe, about their experiences, about their lives on Caddo Lake. Overall, don't let anyone spoil this movie for you. The one thing that made this movie special for me was that I went in thinking that I was going to get some kind of mind-bending, provocative, really dark Gillian Flynn type shit. But instead, I really got a nail-biting family drama slash mystery that really just tore my heartstrings apart. Yes, I admit it. I cried like maybe three to five times. I even had to pause the movie so I can wipe my face. <laughs> it was that bad. But yeah, I mean, I think that this is not going to entice many critics' radar, but this definitely secures a spot on one of my favorite films of 2024. Well, all right, guys, that's all I got to share about that movie. Go ahead and check it out. It's streaming on Max. Look forward to more reviews. I want to thank you guys again for taking some time out of your day to hear me talk some movies. I'm Jarnok Banawag, and I'll see you guys at the theater. Take care.